Hi guys and welcome back to Hilltop Homestead's YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over some costs of living and yes things may be different depending on where you live so keep that in mind if you think that you want to start homesteading because it's a lot more work than anyone thinks. Trust me. Alright so now let's start off. If you have not bought your house yet let's start there. So if you are going to live in a more populated state with a higher mortgage or ta property taxes, that is going to be your biggest thing. So here, so starting off with your mortgage, depending on what state you're going to live in, that is going to be your biggest factor. Unless you already own your home, then congratulations, your most expensive part is already done. So here in New Jersey, um, right around where I kind of live, you're looking at maybe it, it just drastically changes so maybe like two towns over one acre could go for a million dollars and maybe another town over one acre could go for not built on i'd say maybe two hundred thousand, maybe a little different so it really really depends especially where i live in new jersey that's going to be your biggest difference so depending on what you can afford to put down on your house, how lucky you are getting a cheapest rate, but make sure if you want a homestead and you want to have animals that you check with the HOA or your town's guidelines where you are going to live. I know there are some towns around me where you have to have at least three acres to own four chickens. <laughs> so it really, really depends. And that is going to be your first thing that you should look at before you buy your house. There are so many people that I look at or I hear, I need to get rid of my animals. I didn't know I couldn't have them in my town. Okay, so number one, figure that out because mortgage is gonna be your most expensive. After that, now it's gonna depend on also where you live and how off grid you wanna be. So homesteading to different people means vastly different things. To us, it means being as sustainable as possible. To others, it means being completely off grid. So are you gonna have solar on your property? Are you gonna run wind power somehow? Or is there gonna be water power somehow? Or are you just gonna be on the grid and use the land, use the government's power source? That's number two. After that, you are then gonna look at, are you going to be growing all of your own food? And that means vegetables, fruit trees, um, your meat, your eggs, are you going to have an area to go fishing? All right, so number three. Now we're going to look at your animals. Let's just say you have nothing on your property, right? No chicken coop, no fencing, no nothing. You now have to build that first. And one of the biggest mistakes we did is we got animals and then had to build this infrastructure. So we had absolutely nothing on our property. Um, and I was so gung-ho, jump on everything. And I bought so much stuff and it wound up being such a headache because we had to then backtrack, build a chicken coop, um, build all the fencing for the alpacas that we have, make sure that the orchard's fully fenced in because we have deer that jump over six foot fences. We had to make sure we had an eight foot fence all the way around our orchard. Same thing for our garden. So all of these things are not really doable without these things. So do not make the mistake I made build your fencing first before you get animals. That's, if I can recommend one thing, if you listen to anything, that is it. Make sure you have fencing before you have your animals and make sure you have a home for them because you don't want, you know, your animals out in the middle of the winter time if you get snow where you are suffering. So that's in number three, okay? So after your animal, after your fencing, so either look at the cost of fencing, depending on what kind of fencing you want, we went with basically the basic structure, T-post and welded wired fence together. So about in New Jersey right now, a T-post for, I think a six foot T-post is around 557. Um, and then a reel of welded galvanized fence is going to be about $87. Um, so factor in that, how much are you gonna fence? Are you fencing off acres at a time? Are you fencing off your entire property to make sure you have neighbors' dogs coming on your property? Things like that. Um, so 
once you have your fencing in place, once you have your housing in place, see how much your housing is going to cost. Are you going to makeshift something out of the old pallets? Or are you going to buy something more expensive from like the Amish or from like Home Depot or something? I know you can get some sheds from Home Depot for like, I think three grand, which is not cheap, but what you're looking at. Um, one of the, some of the cheaper chicken houses that you can use chicken coops are probably going to be about three to $500, which do not hold all birds. So you're going to build your own coop or are you going to buy one? Okay. Now we're going to look at feed. So what are you going to feed your animals? Are you going to try to grow all of your own feed for your animals? So that may be possible if you live in a state where it is nice and sunny all year round and it's good temperatures for growing. But if you live in a cooler state, are you going to have enough time to grow enough corn? We owe you name it for your feed to make sure you have enough protein and all that for a healthy flock or healthy other animals. Um, so if you are not going to grow your own feed, then we're going to look at the pricing of chicken feed animal or any other animal feed. Really? I'm just going to use chickens as an example because I feel like most people own chickens. So here in New Jersey, I know at Charter Supply, we use the brand Nature's Best. It's organic. And about two years ago, I was looking at pricing. It has obviously increased everything going on. We were paying about $25 for a bag of layer feed. Now you are looking at about $28 per bag. So give or take that, and then how many birds you have. So we buy in bulk, so we don't have to buy smaller bags. But when we were buying smaller bags, one bag is going to last you, I would say, half a week if you have over 60 birds. So factor in that amount. I believe the ratio is one fourth pup per bird. Um, so after the feeding of your animals, we're gonna look at, now how are you gonna store all of your food? Do you have a root cellar? Do you have some way to store a lot of your vegetables that you grew are you going to can things do you own a canner do you own a water bath canner they're probably going to be the cheapest rate i know in european countries we do not pressure can so also looking at that are you going to be rebel canner and look up other ways to water bath can everything or are you going to start pressure canning pressure canners are expensive they're about five hundred dollars six hundred dollars for a nice pressure canner for an all-american pressure canner then you buy all of your cans you can your jars which say not cans Make sure you have all the rings, all the vinegar, all, all that stuff, and go from there. So now, do you know how to process a bird? If you are, if you do not, you're either going to pay someone or you're going to learn. So my suggestion is YouTube it, find a friend that is willing to show you how to do it. Um, I have a video that's going to be coming out, so I'm just still editing it. And learn that way. It's going to be your cheapest way. Buy a defeatherer. If you're only gonna do 50 birds, your hands are gonna hurt, but it'll be worth it. So if you're gonna do more than 50 birds a year, I would recommend it. They are also about $400, give or take. Um, we bought ours from Coop and Moore. And then, how are you gonna store them? Are you going to can that meat? Are you gonna know how to process them to put them into a jar? Or are you going to freeze most of them whole? Or All right, so. Now, butchering large animals and storing all the meat. So are you going to hunt? Are you going to be buying from a local farmer who has a cow or has deer on their property? Are you going to be growing pigs? Are you going to be butchering it yourself? Do you have a location at your homestead where you can safely and properly dispose and butcher of this animal? If not, you're going to look at the feed cost um, of raising a cow if you are not going to be buying it from a local farmer. Um, and now if you are, are you when you're, where are you going to butcher it? Butchers cost a lot. Uh, I believe up in New Jersey, butchering a bear at a butcher's costs around five to six hundred dollars. I do not know what it costs to butcher a cow because I have, we have not done that yet. But that is something we are looking into this year for a half share of a cow. Those are also more things that you have to look at for price runs, price wise that may vary depending on the location you are in. Um, and then probably the last thing is what is your grocery bill going to look like? Are you going to be growing all of the wheat and harvesting all of your own wheat or are you going to be purchasing in larger quantities from the grocery store? 
are you going to be buying in bulk or are you going to go to like a stop and shop or a Publix or something like that. So those factors are going to vary. Um, there are other things that you can also have on your homestead that you do not necessarily need but are definitely going to be a plus or a benefit for you is probably a greenhouse. Are you going to have irrigation run throughout your property? Does your property already have those or are you going to dig them? And going back to the beginning where I said, are you going to be more off grid? Are you going to have a well dug? And how are you going to run that well? Or are you hooked up to city water? So these are just some things that if you really want a homestead, you should look into them before you get started. You can definitely do a small half acre homestead. Don't let anyone knock you if that's all you can afford. It's perfectly fine. You can grow a lot of vegetables and a lot of fruit in a half acre homestead. You may not be able to have chickens, but that's okay. Do what you can, support your other local homesteaders, join a local group. They are great, they're everywhere, they're so beneficial. So do your research and make sure you know that if you're gonna get into another hobby like bees or you know butchering your own animals, you're going to need tools that are involved in those processes as long with the cost of raising those animals. So look it up. Have fun. I hope I helped. Um, if you have any questions, post down below and hopefully we'll get this ball rolling and have, we'll have a YouTube video out every week. So let me know.